everybody. Uh, welcome aboard the Scudners.com Scudcast. If you hadn't had an opportunity yet to head over to Scudners.com, I encourage you to uh, come over and check us out. Our aviation forum is completely ad-free. We have tons of resources on there uh, that are free to download as long as you sign up. Don't worry, I'm not going to post any uh, or send you any spam emails or anything like that. We're not that type of forum, just an aviation forum for you guys to come by. Check it out. All right, let's get into today's video. So in the first video, you're going to see a CL215 uh, initiate a, a water bombing drop. I think it's over in Spain. Uh, but I want you to keep in mind, you know, the lighting conditions and look in the background or in of, of these videos. And just kind of think to yourself about uh, when you've been flying around in the smoke or maybe you've never flown in smoke. But uh, keep that in mind uh, when you're watching these videos. Uh, second of all, I'm going to get into a accident uh, report from the NTSB that kind of highlights uh, the hazards with uh, flying in these conditions and especially for these uh, uh, water bombing uh, firefighting pilots. So keep that in the back of your mind as you watch these videos. So this next video here is the uh, accident with the uh, air tractor down in Idaho. And I just want to caution you that there was a fatality in this one. Uh, of our uh, fellow pilot uh, flying uh, this plane here today. So your discretion is advised. Oh. Watching that, it's it's difficult to watch, but uh, take a look around the train, and this is, goes back to what I was saying with the first video there. The lighting conditions, uh, flying around in smoke haze, and uh, look at the color of the uh, grass on these rolling hills down there in Idaho. Uh, it's almost the same as the, uh, the hazy skies uh, with all the uh, forest fire smoke in the uh, in the air. Now. Uh, though he didn't drop his uh, fire retardant load there, which uh, was a contrib what I think was a contributing factor, maybe he could have outclimbed the terrain in uh, in uh, in this scenario. But the NTSB in their final report, uh, despite having uh, investigated and looked into um, prior malfunctions with this system for dropping uh, the fire retardant uh, from there, they did, they concluded that. The probable cause of the accident was the pilot's decision, and this I'm quoting from the uh, NTSB report, the pilot's, pilot's descent below surrounding terrain and his delayed decision to initiate a climb, which resulted in impact with terrain. Contributing to the accident were terrain and lighting conditions that affected the pilot's ability to accurately assess terrain clearance. So think about that for, for just a minute there. Despite the pilot not uh, being able to pinch off his uh, load there, uh, of uh, fire retardant and uh, climb out of that uh, valley. Uh, the NTSB looked at that and determined that you know the pilot still went too low and figured uh, that uh, or concluded that uh, you know the pilot went too low. And that goes to show you what spatial uh, uh, disorientation or spatial awareness, how it can really affect um, you know your ability to see and judge distance uh, when flying in those sorts of conditions. Now, when I, I post things like this, you know, I've gotten flack in the past from uh, viewers to uh, uh, my website and uh, to this Facebook group. And, you know, basically along the lines of what are we supposed to be entertained by uh, airplane crashes and, and things like that. And, and no, uh, I always reply to those. No, you're not. You're supposed to learn from them uh, and learn from those mistakes. This year, uh, up in uh, my neck of the woods, we haven't had a whole lot of uh, fire um, uh, smoke haze in the area. But uh, and over the, over the last two years, it was uh, it was pretty intense, and it kind of made flying in my own private airplane, uh, you know, problematic, not really enjoyable. You know, I like to go out there. Uh, you know, I fly for a living, obviously, but uh, if I'm not getting paid to do it, I want to go out there and enjoy myself. Uh, so learn from these mistakes, and these pilots that are flying the 215 there, and the um, the air tractor, you know, really high time experienced uh, pilots. And you know they can make mistakes like this, and unfortunately, in in, in the latter one, uh, cost the uh, cost the man his life, and none of us want to see that. 
So with that being said, you know, I think back uh, during my career when I was doing uh, fire patrol up in the Yukon, I was flying a uh, 206 around, you know, fire spotting. And we had a report of a, uh, a fire out by Los Angeles Creek. And I took off out of a place called Beaver Creek. I think I wrote it, might have written, 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 whatever, written a story about this in my Scud's Tall Tales uh, on the forum. But uh, I took off out of uh, Beaver Creek and headed over to a place called Los Angeles Creek. This is up in the Yukon Territory, just south of uh, Dawson City. And um, I flew out east towards Los Angeles Creek. And the sun was at my back, and it was really smoky, hazy conditions. And I was able to get over there and assess the, the new fire and, and call it in to the uh, uh, Forest Service there. And the, um, but on the way back, uh, that's when I ran into problems because the sun was so low on the horizon. This was even about 7 or 8 o'clock at night. You got to remember, though, up in the Yukon and, and those, uh, uh, and that far north, the sun doesn't go down. You get about 23 and a half hours of sunlight a day, I think, at that time of the year. So I had the sun basically right in my face in half a mile, probably had half a mile visibility, you know, trying to make my way back to uh, Beaver Creek. And it was just, it was just bad. So if I, if I'm like a cat and I got nine lives, I'm pretty sure I used up three of those on, on that day. I was falling ridge lines at, uh, you know, incredible, uh, incredibly close. Um, good God, it would have made a good GoPro video, uh, <laughs> if they had those back in the day. Anyway, I made my way there and I followed the rivers and, and came over snag, uh, in the Yukon, which, uh, snag is famous for having the coldest recorded temperature in North America. I think it was, might have been, no, not the world, but North America anyway. Um, came over Snag, then uh, continued west over to uh, Beaver Creek. And just goes to show you, you know, I'd been flying around there for uh, the last, uh, the prior three years and in those kind of conditions, and, and that almost uh, cost me uh, dearly that day. So uh, to sum up, guys, uh, when it is smoky and hazy out there, take extreme caution. You know, think about it uh, for a while and, uh, and fly safe. If you want to see more content like this, uh, please like and subscribe uh, to my channel and like this video. It helps out with the algorithm and uh, we'll put uh, this in front of uh, more pilots like you. Thanks again.